I miss the days where you can get deals like this. Now you gotta understand, this was bought in the late 90s when places like Software Etc. and EB Games were liquidating their NES stock. I'd buy whatever I didn't have, and turns out this game, five bucks, man, I couldn't pass that up. And although deals like this still may exist in places that don't realize what they have on their hands, it's not the end of the world. There are still some great, great NES games that are out there that costs about five bucks. How are you feeling? You got John Rage here, and I'm covering my top five favorite $5 games. This is according to Price Charter, and I'm looking for games that are about $5, usually between the four and $5 mark, and here's what I've found, and I think these games um, are absolutely worth the price. And again, these are $5 according to PriceCharter.com. If you go into like a local retro shop, you might see, a, you know, the price may fluctuate, of course, depending on where you're going and what you're buying, but look out for it. Number five, gonna kick it off to Spy Hunter. Classic arcade game, but plays very well on the NES. Now it's funny, playing this game growing up, I thought you had to shoot all of the cars, and then I'd wonder why my score kept flashing. It turns out, you only need to get rid of the enemy cars, there are some friendly civilian cars on the road, uh, and if you shoot them, then your score stops rising for a while. And this is a true story, I didn't realize this until maybe literally a year and a half ago. There is no ending to this game, so you have basically unlimited gameplay value. You go along in your super awesome spy car, you try to get rid of the other enemies, or at least try to avoid them. The fun part for me with this game is going up in the back of these other trucks and getting a special power-up item. It can be missiles, it can be smokescreen, it can be like your oil slick. That was kind of a fun idea for this game. And of course, when the game branches off into two different roads, depending on where you go, it'll open it up to a little bit something else. Maybe, you know, across bridges and stuff like that. There's a part later on where you can actually turn into a boat. That's super cool. Classic arcade game, fun game. It's Spy Hunter, and it's about $5. I think it's worth having in your collection. Number four, you gotta check out Rambo. Now the game is called Rambo, it's really based on Rambo 2. And I loved this game because it was a Metroidvania style game before Metroidvania was even a word. Instead of having level one, level two, level three, you just have the world. And you have to explore the world uh, by nature of you know going through these different paths and different routes. It also has that action RPG experience system, a lot like Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link, and I love Zelda 2. Uh, you know, the more enemies you hit, the more you kill them, the more points you get, the better experience you get, the stronger you get. A lot of items you can pick up and use later on too, like arrows and exploding arrows and grenades, stuff like that. Because it's Metroidvania style, you can go wherever you want, but you can't quite get there yet. Like sometimes you'll run across something that says, oh, you need to do this before you can pass this area. So you gotta go back and find what you gotta do, and that way uh, you can carry on with the rest of the game. And I think it's still a super fun game. Back in the day when this game first came out, I thought it, you know, the graphics were kind of generic and everything was kind of, you know, whatever, but I still come back to this game. I, I just really like it. Number three, and I was a little surprised this was about $5 according to Price Charter, Wrath of the Black Manta. Now to me, this is totally a $10 game, but hey, if it's for five bucks, man, five bucks is five bucks. Plays a little bit like Shinobi from Sega, but it has the added element of you can do your magical ninja moves. <laughs> like you can, create, you can create a clone of yourself above you to uh, shoot enemies below you and above you at the same time. You can um, have a little tracker ball or a little you know, missile kind of thing that shoots out. And those can upgrade through each level. You know, you can swap out some of the uh, ninja powers. Now as you're making your way through, you're trying to save the kidnapped kids. There's all these bad guys in the way. Sometimes the red bad guys, you can capture them and they might tell you some secret like, hey, you know, check this thing out over here. Or Look over here. Usually it's pretty pointless. I mean, it just gives you a cutscene, which is kind of cool. But the fact that you can do that instead of killing them, I thought was pretty fun. And I just think it's a fun game. If you haven't checked out Wrath of the Black Manta yet, definitely recommend checking it out. And for $5, we can't go wrong. Number two on my list is Remote Control. Now this was a game show on MTV. This was during the MTV era where they still played music videos, but they're starting to introduce some non-music videos content. And this was their game show, super cool game show. If you're not quite familiar, it asks you questions about TV shows, basically. Um, you don't know what channel is what until you click on it, and then it gives you a uh, two questions. So you, you click on it, it's like, oh, it's the Gilligan's Island channel. You ask her a question about that, and then you can revisit that same channel. You, you're, you know you're going to get a Gilligan's Island question. The drawback, I got to be upfront with you, is because this game came out when it came out, you're answering TV questions 
about the TV shows that came out when they came out. So you're answering questions like Gilligan's Island, which was in reruns and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> certainly if you're a dinosaur like I am, you can remember some of these old shows. Might be fun for you. If not, I, I mean, process of elimination, it only gives you three answers to choose from. So you can still have fun with this game. And again, for $5 remote control, I think it's pretty decent. Definitely one of the better game show games on NES, I think. And in true game show fashion, before I get to my number one spot, let's look at today's $5 game from today's special guest. Take it away, Kyle. How are you feeling? You got Kyle here from Merrimack Games. What was that? All right, the NES game, the $5 NES game, the $5 NES game for John's video. That $5 NES game, got you covered. This is RC Pro-Am, this is one of my favorite NES games. It's one of the best racing games on the NES, and it's only $5. This is a ton of fun, really challenging, no two-player, unfortunately. You have to get the sequel for that. This is still a great pickup. Anybody with an NES collection should have this in their collection. RC Pro-Am, $5, go check it out. Now, looking at the list of all the $5 games, my number one spot, I'm going to give it up to Wizards and Warriors 2 Iron Sword. And not just because it has Fabio on the cover. This game, made by Rare, has that rare quality animation to it, and the music is fantastic as well. It's a fun game, you can keep playing it, much like Wizards and Warriors 1, Unlimited continues, so you can just keep playing it for as long as you need, but there's still enough element in this game where you may just give up after a while, and then you'll come back to it later, because sometimes you're just like, I'm trying to find the how to get the thing, and then, uh, but things will open up itself to you, and you're like, oh, that's how I get past the one part. Now we call games like Super Mario Brothers platformers, we call other games platformers, I don't think any game has more platforms <laughs> in itself than maybe this game right here. Uh, there, there's so much stuff to jump on and jump onto. It's funny, your B button is your sword attack, but more often than not, you just have to jump into enemies or crash into them, and it'll kill them. <laughs> you know, you do use your sword later on because you can like you know launch items, um, but you also get your you know sword upgrades, shield upgrades, uh, you know helmet upgrades, other uh, powers to um, help you in your quest here. You find these secret rooms, you can pick up these little magic things. Uh, there's so much more with this game that I just, I really enjoyed. And I love the colors and I love the music. Uh, I love the animation, I think. Um, I mean, just everything in this game, um, to me, makes it worth the $5. And just can put you on a little fun adventure going through and, um, you know, seeing, seeing what's coming up next. And I love the bosses in each level, too. You pick up your magic, which is how you kind of dispel the boss for each level. Um, and the bosses are usually just some giant face on something. <laughs> Which, which, which works fine for me. Uh, but if you haven't checked it out yet, Wizards and Warriors 2 Iron Sword. It's only five bucks. Uh, I'd recommend it. I always have more videos like this coming out soon, so make sure you're subscribed. It really helps me, especially with YouTube. The more subscribers there are, the more people are clicking on the video, the more it'll be watched to other people, and the more you might see the next video, and that's what I really appreciate. Those are my favorites that are about five bucks. I'd love to hear yours in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. It's always coming out soon.